and welcome to Harman Talks, the entrepreneurship series. I'm Larissa Adams from Harman & Co. And I have the great privilege of interviewing some of the UK's most distinguished entrepreneurs who are now running successful companies in both private and listed markets. The series has been a fantastic way for investors to get a better understanding of the people who are running the companies they're invested in. So through the interviews, we uncover more about who they are as people, what motivates them, and ultimately what drives their business. So this morning, I'm talking to Net Scientific CEO, Dr. Ilyan Ilyev. So later in the interview, we're going to be hearing from Ilyan with his views on what makes a CEO tick. In the lead up, questions will be framing it with the backdrop of his experience running EMV Capital and now Net Scientific. So keep watching to the end so you don't miss out on Ilian's key views. And then as a company, Net Scientific invests in, develops and commercializes life sciences, healthcare and technology companies in the UK, United States and across the world and is listed on the LSE AIM markets. This is always such an exciting space. So I'm really looking forward to this. Ilian, it's great to welcome you to Hardman Talks. How are you doing today? Thank you, Larissa. Doing very well, and thank you for having me. So before we get into a more behind the veil take of what makes a CEO tick, let's discuss a little bit more on who you are and what your background is. So can you give us a flavor of where your career has taken you both geographically and sector-wise and, and what interests and motivates you? Oh, thank you. So uh, I mean, I've moved around a lot. Uh, 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 or a little bit, at least, uh, as, as you can tell from my name, I, uh, 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 I was born in Bulgaria, uh, but I uh, moved as a kid with my parents uh, to Africa, to uh, Mozambique, and then subsequently lived uh, between South Africa and Mozambique uh, for many years. Uh, and that's where I started my first business. Uh, and then moved to the UK in uh, 2001, where I did a PhD at the Judge Business School uh, of Management in Cambridge University. Uh, focused on uh, innovation and uh, venture capital. Uh, and so that's where kind of my second entrepreneurial career started, uh, where I um, set up a, 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 a few other businesses before coming on to EMV Capital and uh, eventually Net Scientific. Okay, great. So your, your entrepreneurial uh, career, I guess, started quite early. So have you always adopted the same management style and attitude to risk and reward? Um, well, I, as, as a metaphor, I use jazz because I absolutely love jazz. And, and I think it's, it's a bit similar to that in the sense that you find that you've got a consistent theme throughout, but then you, you kind of move around that and you riff and you explore in one or another direction. But somehow year in, year out, you keep finding yourself coming back to the same themes that when you look back, well, you know, that excited me 20 years ago and it still excites me uh, today. Okay, that's an interesting analogy. I like it. Um, so, okay, let's get a little bit more specific and talk about the recent past. So what has been your experience moving from MD of EMV Capital to CEO of Net Scientific? Was this a natural step in your career development or was this an opportunity that you just really couldn't let slip? Well, it was a bit of both. Um, EMV Capital, uh, I could set up EMV Capital as a uh, kind of a standalone bootstrap uh, 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 boutique a player in the VC space focused on uh, deep tech technologies. Uh, and uh, uh, the vision I had, I suppose, in terms of the scale up of that business, uh, I found uh, uh, the, the acquisition by Net Scientific of EMV Capital uh, provided a shortcut to executing that vision with uh, uh, more resources and uh, the benefits of uh, working with a uh, uh, AIM listed business. So the combination of the two companies. Uh, uh, just uh, uh, almost two years ago now, uh, provided uh, both companies with a better outcome. On the one side, there was the entrepreneurial team I had built at the MV Capital uh, that could uh, execute deals in a very lean manner and uh, was very flexible. And on the other hand, you had the benefits of an aim listed company uh, with brand balance sheet uh, reach and uh, uh, some recognition. Uh, and the combination, I think, has been uh, quite exciting. Right. Okay. So what has changed about your day to day and your, your role responsibilities? Has the role of CEO of a listed business brought about ex unexpected challenges? Well, I mean, clearly moving from the private to the public markets is uh, a challenge to any CEO. Um, and, uh, uh, but, but in many ways, I, I think, you know, over and above the regulatory uh, and uh, reporting pressures that the listed business has, which are there for a very good reason. Uh, I, I think it's 
consistent with uh, uh, the ethics and uh, philosophy that I have for other businesses, which is, uh, you know, you should run companies in a consistent and transparent corporate governance manner, whether they're uh, public or private. Uh, and there's a quid pro quo element in terms of being on a publicly listed company. It's not uh, 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 the reporting and uh, governance aspects that uh, some find burdensome are there for a reason because it deals transparency, confidence and understanding of that business by the outside world. Uh, there is volatility, as of course, we are on the smaller end of, of the market. Uh, but equally, there is also a lot of visibility for our vision and approach that uh, overall benefits both us and the portfolio companies we work with. Okay, so how have you managed all of that? Do you find that, is that a simple task and an easy transition? Um, and what, what, just tell me a little bit more about your specific experience. Well, I mean, there's been a lot of discovery uh, and understanding and just uh, uh, kind of working with uh, uh, specialists and uh, people with uh, a lot more experience than myself in this and other markets. But uh, uh, as an entrepreneur, I'm used to getting into a new space and uh, uh, um, developing a knowledge, expertise and a way of working in it uh, quickly. And uh, I think most importantly, working with people that I trust and have depth of experience and expertise to, uh, to get to a point faster. Um, I think what's been really interesting and is quite unique to the UK uh, space is uh, the listed venture capital, the listed innovation finance uh, model, which is uh, 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 some, somewhat of a UK specialism on, on the A market and the main market, in fact. And I think it provides, enables us to innovate around what a venture capital player can do. The things that uh, with a pure play uh, VC fund uh, are not easy to do. You can be more innovative. In some ways, you can be more flexible uh, than with a, in a classic fund model. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so let's talk about Net Scientific as a company and its growth opportunities, because this must be the focal point of your ambitions right now. So what do you see as the next big steps for the company? And what are you most excited about? Well, I should flag that we're in a blackout period ahead of the publication of our annual report, but I'll stick to things that we have mentioned in the past. I think when, when the two companies were combined, when Net Scientific acquired EMV, uh, we came up with a, uh, uh, or developed a, uh, a good and strong strategy that has uh, uh, fit us well. It's what we call the capital light investment model, whereby we combine balance sheet investment from the PLC with the advised or syndicated investment that EMV brings from its investors. But that's just the beginning, that's just the money part. We then layer on top of that uh, a proactive investment approach, which in my mind is absolutely critical in the uh, deep tech space, whether it's in biotech, life sciences or sustainability, uh, where you remain close and uh, quite active on the board of the companies you're focused on. Uh, a further pillar of our, of our strategy is what we call transatlantic uh, uh, bridges. And that is where we help uh, UK or European companies to accelerate their growth in the North American market and beyond. Uh, but interestingly, also help some of the US North American companies uh, transfer over to, to Europe. Uh, in today's uh, 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 global and uh, political economic environment, uh, I think this is even more important than it was a few years back to have this bridge between uh, uh, the two uh, major areas of uh, economic growth and innovation on the US and, uh, and Europe. So the combination of, of these various aspects of our strategy, I think, provides something quite unique to the portfolio companies that we, uh, uh, that we work with. So at the moment, it's uh, a lot of hard work implementing that multifaceted strategy and uh, seeing some of the results. Okay, you've just sort of touched on it about what makes you different, but I think let's just expand on that a bit because as CEO, you've obviously got a view of what you believe is Net Scientific's defining factor. So, what do you think um, makes the company stand out from its peer group? Well, I mean, I won't repeat what I just mentioned in terms of the strategic pillars, and I, but I think I'll go a bit further. Where, um, in a sense, there is no right way or text. Well, there is a textbook, but it's not necessarily the right way of funding innovation finance. Uh, that differs significantly how you fund successful high growth technology companies differs by sector, differs over time, differs in geographies, differs uh, in terms of the industrial infrastructure in, in that country. And uh, uh, 
I think as a PLC, we are quite flexible in that we are able to operate in uh, different geographies, in different, uh, um, uh, uh, in different economic systems, if you will, uh, all within uh, the market economy, of course, but the way innovation operates in the US is different to the way innovation operates and is funded in, uh, 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 in Belgium, let's say, which in turn is different to, to, to the UK. So I think the framework we have, we have is uh, sufficiently flexible that we can help companies uh, 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 get funded and grow in those, in those uh, uh, different uh, contexts. Um, uh, and we don't do that just by ourselves. We also benefit from the network of investors and corporates that we work with, which is what we brought with the EMV Capital Acquisition. Uh, to give this uh, uh, multi-layered approach to supporting innovation finance uh, uh, in our space. Okay, and finally, if you could fit this into five different things, um, what would you say makes CEOs tick? I know we've kept this quite broad, um, but we've done that on purpose just to see what, what comes of it. So what would you say makes a CEO tick? Uh, well, I think... Is it four or five or three? I'm not sure, but I'll, I'll, I'll try, I'll try to... <laughs> you can, can list it as you wish, um, but let's see how you go. <laughs> no, that's fine. Well, I think, I think at the highest level, it's just an ambition to make things uh, happen. And, and another way to see it is just being that little bit annoyed at the world that things aren't as good as you think they should be, or you see a solution and that's not uh, being adopted, but uh, uh, not, not that annoyed as to be a bore. Uh, I think another element is uh, a strong sense of empathy to your team uh, and uh, uh, the, the teams in the portfolio companies that you work with. Uh, empathy in the sense that, uh, you know, if you're working with many different teams, you need to get to the point fast, you need to build relationships so that you can execute a multi-year strategy. Uh, and talking of which, uh, you need to be forward looking into future scenarios. Now, that doesn't mean linear. You know, the world changes and changes rapidly we can see it all around us. But uh, knowing that the world today will always be different to the world tomorrow and, and being awake to trends and how those go. Now, this big picture sense that I think is very important, you need to balance with implementation. You know, it's, uh, the big picture itself uh, uh, is good in, a, in an academic or a, uh, or, or, or a commentary context, but uh, you need to implement that vision in an operational manner in a way that makes work. So this brings me to the fifth point, which is uh, taking all that great stuff, all that wonderful blue sky thinking and so on, and in the end, converting it into numbers and investment returns for the shareholders, uh, because without that, uh, you'll be out of a job very soon. Okay, well, great. You, you made it to five points, so that's perfect. <laughs> okay, thanks very much, Ilian, for sharing your thoughts with us. Uh, it's been great to get to know you a little bit better and understand more on your thought process it's certainly very interesting for investors to learn more about management teams in this context. So thanks again. Um, and to our viewers, please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. We appreciate your time. Please do share your comments below and hit the like button. Otherwise, we'll see you back here on Hardman Talks next time. Thanks so much.